2018 Mathematical Olympiad of the USA Problem number 3 For a given integer n greater than or equal to 2, let a1, a2, etc., am be the set of positive integers less than n that are relatively prime to n. Prove that if every prime that divides m also divides n, then the sum of all these numbers raised into power k is divisible by m for every possible integer k. I will use letter v instead of letter n, because it's difficult to distinguish between n and m when you speak. Number m defined in this problem is the Euler's totient function phi of v. This function is defined for every positive integer v. It's the number of all positive numbers that are less than v and are co-prime to v. This function has a, a simple well-known formula, v, divided by each of its prime factors and multiplied by each prime factor minus 1. The numbers a1, a2, up to am are called totatives for number v. If they are distinct, less than v, co-prime to v, and their number is phi of v. The first totative is always 1, and the last totative is always v minus 1. Function sk of v is defined as the sum of powers to the same number k of all m totatives of number v. This set of m totatives is the basis for the entire set of natural numbers that are co-prime to v. If you add v to each totative, you will get the next set of m numbers that are co-prime to v. If you add 2v to each totative, you will get the next subset of natural numbers co-prime to v, etc. Each sequence ai, ai plus v, ai plus 2v, etc. is an arithmetic progression in which all members are called equivalent modular v. So the entire set of natural numbers co-prime to v can be partitioned into m classes of equivalence, modular v. Numbers v described in this problem are restricted to such numbers whose Euler's totient function phi of v has the same prime factors as the original number v. We're supposed to prove that if m equals phi of v, the value of function sk of v is divisible by m. We'll prove it by induction, increasing number r of prime numbers in the prime decomposition of v, starting with r equals 1, and gradually increasing it. Also, within each induction step, we will do internal induction, incrementing the exponent of the highest prime factor. Let r be equal to 1, so number v equals some prime number p1 to some power of k1. Then m, that is equal phi of v, equals p1 to the k1 minus 1 times p1 minus 1. It turns out that by definition of number v in this problem, number p1 can only be 2. This is because if p1 is any prime number greater than 2, then p1 minus 1 is an even number, and so it has prime divisor 2, which number v doesn't have. That contradicts the definition of numbers v. So, if r equals 1, then v can only be in the form 2 to some l. Then p1 minus 1 equals 1, and the value of m equals phi of v equals 2 to the l minus 1. The totatives of number 2 to the l are first consecutive odd numbers, 1, 3, 5, etc., whose number is 2 to the l minus 1. We need to prove that sk of 2 to the l is divisible by 2 to the l minus 1. A different way to say it is that the sum of powers to the same number k of the first consecutive odd numbers, whose number is a power of 2, has arithmetic mean that is integer number, meaning that the sum is divisible by the quantity of these odd numbers. If number v equals 2, then the statement of this problem works, 
since the only totative of 2 is 1, and 1 raised to any power k is divisible by 1. Let's look at the case v equals 2 squared. Then m, the number of totatives of 2 squared, is 2. These totatives are 1 and 3 for number 4. And the proof of the statement of this problem for this case is simple. Any power of two odd numbers, 1 and 3, are also two odd numbers. Their sum is even, so it's divisible by 2. It's interesting that the rest of the proof of this entire theorem will be done by induction based on this one simple fact. Let's prove the internal induction step not just for the numbers in the form 2 to the L, but for any number that satisfies the condition of this problem and has r prime numbers with exponent of the highest prime kr minus 1. And we'll prove that if the statement of the problem works for that number, then it's also satisfied for the same number with exponent of the highest prime incremented by 1. This way will prove that for the given r, any number that satisfies the condition of this problem with this number of primes satisfies the statement regardless of the exponents of these primes, k1, k2, up to the kr. From the definitions of numbers w and v, it follows that v equals w times pr then phi of v equals phi of w times pr. So we need to prove that sk of v is divisible by phi of v, which equals phi of w times pr. This is the goal. Then it's obvious that all the numbers co-prime to w are co-prime to v and vice versa. So the set of totatives of v can be constructed as the union of the full set of totatives of W, then the set of totatives of W each increased by W, then the set of the same totatives each increased by 2W, etc., until we obtain P subsets of totatives of V. Let's select any number j from 1 to p minus 1 and evaluate the sum of powers to the k of all totatives of w increased by jw. Each of these powers has the value calculated by the binomial formula in which we can separate the term ai to the k from the rest of the binomial terms. The sum of all ai to the k equals sk of w, which gives us pr values of sk of w, which by induction assumption is divisible by phi of w times pr. Now let's evaluate the rest of the binomial terms. Let's fix any one binomial term and add such terms for all the totatives of w. From that sum, we can factor the binomial coefficient and the power of jw, and the remaining part will be the sum of powers to some number that is less than k of all the totatives of w, which by induction assumption is divisible by phi of w. And since we have factored some power of w, and we recall that w is divisible by pr, then the entire sum is divisible by phi of w times pr, which proves our induction step. The resulting sum of powers to the k of all totatives of v is divisible by phi of v. Notice one special case. When we count the term jw to the k for each totative of w, the number of these terms is phi of w, so their sum is also divisible by phi of w times pr. Let's look at this example. The proven induction base is that sk of 2 squared is divisible by 2. We want to prove that sk of 2 cubed is divisible by 4. The totatives of the proven induction base of number 4 are 1 and 3. This is the first subset of the totatives of 8. 
The second subset of totatives of 8 includes two numbers, 1 plus 4 equals 5, and 3 plus 4 equals 7. The line at the bottom of the diagram shows the formula for the sum of powers of totatives of 8 from the second subset for k equals 2. It equals 1 squared plus 3 squared, which is sk of 4, since we already have 1 sk of 4 from the first set, adding the second one gives us 2 times sk of 4. So it's divisible by 2 times 2. The second part is 2w times 1 plus 3, where w is divisible by 2, the highest prime factor of w, and 1 plus 3 is divisible by 2, according to the induction assumption. And the third part is 2 times w squared, where w is divisible by 2, and since there are 2 w squared, 2 is divisible by 2. This proves the statement that S2 of 8 is divisible by 4. The next step of induction is to prove our theorem for number v that equals x times p, where x is a good number that satisfies the condition of our problem and has r prime numbers with exponents k1, k2, etc., kr, and p is a new prime number that is greater than all primes in the decomposition of x. And also, p must be such a prime number that prime decomposition of p minus 1 has only the same prime numbers, 2, p2, etc., pr. So that number v is also a good number in terms of our problem's condition. We assume that sk of x is divisible by phi of x, and we want to prove that sk of v is divisible by phi of v. If we prove it, then we are done, because that covers all the cases. So equality with Roman number 1 is the definition of v. It equals x times p. Equality number 2, phi of v equals phi of x times p minus 1. This is by the formula for the Euler's totient function phi. Let's define the new number w that equals x times p minus 1. What's good about this number is that phi of w equals phi of v. This is because v is a good number, so that p minus 1 is the product of powers of prime numbers 2, p2, etc., pr. If we use the Euler's totient function formula for phi of w, we must subtract 1 from each exponent of powers of 2, p2, etc., pr, and multiply it by 2 minus 1, p2 minus 1, etc., pr minus 1. This operation gives us phi of x, and what remains is the product of powers of the same numbers, which equals exactly p minus 1, by definition. On the other hand, number w has r prime numbers in its prime decomposition. And therefore, by induction assumption, sk of w is divisible by phi of w. And what's also important, it's divisible by phi of v. Also notice that all the numbers co-prime to w are co-prime to x, and vice versa. And more exactly, the totatives of x are the first phi of x totatives of w. Now look at equalities number 4. These two equalities are easily deduced from equalities 1, 2, and 3. Recall that x minus 1 is the largest totative of x, and v minus 1 is the largest totative of v. The first of these two equalities shows that if we add w to the last totative of x, we will obtain the last totative of v. So, if we add w to all totatives of x, we will obtain phi of x consecutive numbers co-prime to x and to w that start with w plus 1, and the largest of which is the largest totative of v, v minus 1. The second equality, x minus 1 times p 
equals V minus P shows that if we multiply the largest totative of X by P, we will get the largest multiple of P that precedes V. That means that if we list the products of all the totatives of X and P, we'll obtain all the numbers that are co-prime to X and to W that are less than V and divisible by P. In addition, the number of totatives of W equals the number of totatives of V. We know the definition of totatives of V as all the natural numbers that are less than V and co-prime to V. They can be equally defined as all numbers that are less than V and co-prime to W, minus those of them that are multiples of P. So, to construct all the totatives of V, we need to execute two steps. First step is inserting phi of x numbers co-prime to w, which are all the totatives of x, each incremented by w. This will add phi of x next consecutive numbers co-prime to w. The second step is removing from this new list all the numbers multiples of p. As we have proved, these numbers are the products of all the totatives of x times p. We need to prove that the resulting totatives of v also satisfy the condition that sk of v is divisible by phi of v, which equals phi of x times p minus 1. Now we need to evaluate the sum that is shown at the bottom of the diagram, which is the sum of ai plus w to the k, where ai are the totatives of x. We can use binomial formula for each ai plus w to the k. From this we can separate the sum of powers to the k of all totatives of x. The remaining sum of the binomial formulas can be grouped by fixing each binomial coefficient with a constant power of w, then the remaining sum is the sum of powers of these totatives to some number that is less than k. This sum is divisible by phi of x, and the power of w that is factored is divisible by w, and we know that w is divisible by p minus 1, by equality number 3. So this sum is divisible by phi of x times p minus 1, which equals phi of v. Let's evaluate the sum shown on the diagram a1 times p to the k plus etc., where ai are the totatives of x. p equals 1 plus p minus 1. We can use binomial formula for each term ai times p to the k. From this we can separate the sum of powers to the k of all totatives of x. The remaining sum of the binomial formulas can be grouped by fixing each binomial coefficient with a constant power of p minus 1. Then the remaining sum is the sum of powers of these totatives to some number that is less than k. This sum is divisible by phi of x, and the power of p minus 1 that is factored is divisible by p minus 1. So this sum is divisible by phi of x times p minus 1, which equals phi of v. We're done. Let's look at this example. x is 2 cubed equals 8, v equals 8 times 5, 5 is the new prime factor of v, w equals 8 times 5 minus 1 equals 32, p minus 1 equals 4. Since x is 8, phi of x equals 4. The totatives of x are odd numbers 1, 3, 5, and 7. Phi of w equals phi of x times p minus 1 equals 16. Its totatives are consecutive odd numbers 1, 3, 5, 7, etc. up to 31. Let exponent k be equal to. To construct the totatives of v, that is, totatives of 40, 
we need to insert the next four numbers co prime to w, which is achieved by adding w equals 32 to the first four totatives of w. We get 1 plus 32, 3 plus 32, 5 plus 32, and 7 plus 32. Then we need to subtract from the new list the first four totatives of w multiplied by the new prime number. So we need to subtract the powers to the 2 of numbers 1 times 5, 3 times 5, 5 times 5, and 7 times 5. Then we use the binomial formula for both sums. In the first sum, we factor powers of 32, and in the second sum, we factor the powers of p minus 1, which is 4. And we can see that adding the new four numbers, co prime to 4 and 32, and subtracting from them 4 multiples of 5, does not change the divisibility by phi of w, which is the same as phi of v, which is 16. Also, the quantity stays the same, 16. So S2 of 32 is divisible by 16 by induction assumption, and S2 of 40 is also divisible by 16.